Last night, as I was coming here in the, on the plane, I thought to myself and I said, I was going to talk to them about how inner city kids are setting the tech world on fire. But then I said to myself, you know, let's tell them how inner city boys are changing the world through technology. Before I start, I want to tell you a story about myself and how this first started. You might look at this picture and think, that's a third world country. It actually is 1992, South Central Los Angeles, after the riots. During those times, inner city boys had two options. Either you become a victim to the streets or you hustle to survive. When you walked to school, you had to decide and negotiate with gangs. Do I wear a blue color or do I wear a red color? If you were smart, you probably just wore white. When you got to school, the school that they told you were gonna go was gonna be a magnet technology campus. After four years, I discovered all it was, it was a magnet typing class that we had. Discouraged, I started skipping school. Fortunately enough for me, I found my mentor, my coach. This coach not only took me from the hallways when I was ditching school, but he gave me options. He said, look, Oscar, either I take you to the principal and you get suspended, or I put all cross sticks in your hands and you learn how to play a sport that's gonna open new worlds for you. For me, it was an easy choice. He said, I'm gonna go play lacrosse. I was the first kid in the inner city to play lacrosse. What this did for me, what this tool gave me, was it opened a new world. It gave me a chance to look at people who are not from the same socioeconomic place that I was in. Lacrosse, as some of you may know, is a very wealthy sport. So I was able to interact with kids from a different perspective, kids from a different background. And it gave me a chance to kind of think, dream big, and tell myself, I can do something more than just the walls of my local community. At first, it was very hard to play lacrosse, catching that ball. However, my coach said, if you stick to it, if you practice, you will get better. I became one of the best lacrosse players in Los Angeles. He said, if you, if you become determined, you will succeed, but I need you to stay focused. I don't need you to lose the focus with the distractions that are happening around you, so I want you to make sure that you continue pushing forward. And I did. Years later, I graduated with a computer information system degree. And then later on, I graduated with a master's in educational technology. I was successful at building an, a consulting firm, serving local schools around Los Angeles and serving them with technology access. After doing this for a very long time, somebody invited me to go speak to a class of 60 students at my old school. During that time, I had 60 students in front of me, and I said, how many of you guys know what a website is? Only five kids raised their hand. And then I asked, how many of you guys know how to put a website together or create a website? Nobody raised their hands. This was only five years ago. So I realized there's something happening here. There are kids that know how to hack through the server. There's got to be some talent there. But there's also kids who have no idea of how to do this we might be missing some talent. I also discovered that in my neighborhood, things hadn't changed that much. 55% of the young men in the inner city today are dropping out of high school. 85% of those will either end up unemployed or incarcerated. Detention rooms today are filled with young black and Latino men. And they have no other option to either hustle the streets or figure out a way to survive. So we decided with a friends of ours to say, let's get together and do something about it. We know that these kids, one, have very good negotiation skills. They have to use it in the streets all the time. And two, they're very creative because they have to survive from very limited resources. So we started a program called Urban Techs, Urban Teams Exploring Technology, where we encourage young black men and Latino men how to become technology entrepreneurs. And the way we go out and recruit them, we say is, I'm looking for the best of the best, the best students that I can find. And that doesn't mean that you have to have the best grades. That just means that you have to be hungry 
and have a passion to change your community through technology. That's what I'm looking for. How do I recruit them? Well, it's very easy. I drive down the street sometimes. I see a kid in the corner. He's reading a book. That kid must be a very smart kid. I got to put him into the, into the classroom. He comes in and develops something amazing. What's been successful for us up to this day is that we have a 100% retention rate within our program. And 100% of our kids now are going to four-year schools. What happens is that we bring in our own role models. Role models have gone through our program and now are at big universities. For example, here you will see Marcos, a student from Stanford who has gone through our program and now is coming back to teach other kids how to do this. A young one now is able to see Marco and say, I want to be like Marco. I want to become an engineer. I want to become a computer scientist. And he's able to get that passion through him. We have high expectations for our students, expectations that they want to change something different. The only question we ask during the summer program is, what is one problem that your community has that you can change through technology? And they go ahead and, and address that. For example, one of our kids decided that, you know, in my neighborhood, people don't know about careers in STEM. They don't know about careers in business. So I'm going to develop a platform for them to do this. However, they go through the toughest part in our program, which is being able to be committed and be able to be determined to succeed. Within three weeks into the program, the kid that you see up here in the middle said to me, Oscar, this is too hard for me. There's no way I can sit down code, design, express my ideas to peers. I don't do this. This is not what I'm taught in school. I'm going to quit. I looked at him and I say, Anthony, if you, quit, if you quit today, you're going to have a harder time in the future trying to complete something that you start. I want you to stay with us. And I promise you that if you stay with us, you will be successful. I promise you that if you stay with us, we will help you to get over those obstacles that you have. I said, however, I understand this is tough. It is tough to sit down. It is tough to be committed. It is tough to express your ideas. So I'm going to have you make the decision. Over the weekend, think about it. If you come back Tuesday, great. If you don't, you can always apply next year and do it all over again. Our, programs, our program starts at 10 in the morning. I came in Tuesday morning at 8 in the morning, opened the door. The first kid I see there is Anthony. And he said, Oscar, there's no way I can quit now. I got to stick it through. And I promise you that I'm going to do my best. Anthony today is one of the leaders at his local middle school. He's only in the eighth grade. But now he's starting a technology work at the technology center at his local middle school. And he's inviting other kids to do the same thing. And this is the beauty of it. We tell our kids, look, this is not hard. Success is not hard. It just takes a lot of work. We're starting to find our kids are learning how to dream again. They're learning to have hope. They're learning to think about what I want to do in the future. How can I change my community with technology? One of the problems one of the kids brought, he said, Oscar, you know, my school always tell me that I have to do community service hours. But I hate going to the library and picking up books, cleaning them, putting them back in the shelf. I don't want to do that. That's boring to me. But I still got to complete these um, this hours. So he said, I'm going to go ahead and develop an algorithm, an iPhone app that has an algorithm where it's going to match my interests with a nonprofit that I will want to work for. And I said, oh my god, how am I going to do this? Because I don't know how to develop an iPhone. And we threw him into the project. You know, we gave him a coach, and he started going at it. After eight weeks, he had figured out how to do this algorithm and created this iPhone app for himself. Now, he's the only 15-year-old in all South LA in all what, that's walking around with an iPhone app and that he can say, I'm going to be a businessman and I'm going to change my community with this new technology that I have. The beauty of it is that he has learned not only to be dedicated, but to be committed, but also to depend on his peers, to know that his peers can help it and he can ask for help and help will come to him. Another kid came to us and said, Oscar, I want to make sure that I can run around my neighborhood. In my neighborhood, there's no safety zones where I can go run. In my neighborhood, um, if I run in the wrong place, I can get in trouble. 
So I'm gonna develop a platform, an online platform, where kids can choose where to go run, and we're gonna create safe routes, and then we're gonna invite other kids to run with us. And we're gonna share that on Facebook and share that on Twitter, and then include the entire community. And that's what he went ahead and did. I'm so happy to say that this fall, he went and pitched it to different investors, and we're waiting to see if we get funded. And he's only 16 years old. And that's what the South Central LA, the inner city is doing today, is changing the world through technology. Because they've taken what they, people have said that they can't do, they've taken the problems in their own communities and using technology to revolutionize it and to do something new. But it takes more than just a program. We have to give these kids access. We have to build their confidence. And by the way that we do that today, if we take them to different technology companies, at the end of the program, we go up to Silicon Valley, we visit Google headquarters. It's really important that our kids that don't have access to these companies are taken there, and let me tell you why. We were at Google getting a tour by an executive there. One of our kids had been doing coding for 15 weeks and learned how to do this looks at a janitor and he tells the executive and says, can you please hire me here, even if it is as a janitor? The executive looked at him and said, I don't need you here as a janitor. I need you here as a developer to help me change the world. That in itself flipped the switch in the kid's mind. When we were driving back down from Silicon Valley down to, to Los Angeles, the kid said, Oscar, I know my family's in the dumps and I know we're poor right now, but I promise you, that I'm gonna get better grades. I'm gonna go to Stanford and go work for Google. That kid today went from a 2.1 GPA to a 3.3 GPA. And his focus and being determined to be able to work for Google. And that dream is still alive. It's, it's amazing to see that kids today are changing their own community. I tell everybody that in South LA, we are developing the talent for technology in the future. Nobody has tapped into this talent yet. Nobody has invested in this community yet. I was, I was grateful and lucky that somebody put his time and his money into me. When I was successful in my business, I decided to do the same thing for these kids because I know that if we're gonna solve real issues in this world, we need to have a diverse community in order for us to do that. If we wanna know how to solve the worst problems in low-income communities, we have to be able to look at kids in those communities and ask them, what is the best way that we can solve those problems? They're gonna have an unfair advantage over anybody else because they're going to know exactly what needs to be done in order to solve those problems. I believe that today, the inner cities have the best talent that you can ever find in technology. The one thing we need to do is keep investing in them. But we're not doing this alone. You can help also. You can spark the minds of those kids who will change the world through technology. The only way we can do this is with your help. Today, we still need mentors. We still need coaches that can tell kids how to succeed in technology, who can help them how to solve their algorithm that I can't solve, but that you can solve, and who can bring them up to think bigger than what they see in their own communities. So I tell you today to please join us in this new movement, and I thank you for being here with me.